so we've talked a fair amount about sort of the growing problem and why this is an issue. Um, but one of the things that we haven't really talked about is that with what's happening in the healthcare industry, more and more uh, needles are being sent to customers via the mail. Um, there is more um, inject home injectables that are now being sent out um, through the mail. It's, it's increasing at a rate of about 15 to 17 percent a year, they think. Um, and so that means that people don't even have an opportunity to go to a pharmacy. You're not ever speaking with somebody. And so one of the, one of the places where, where we really feel like we're dropping the ball is in public education. Um, so I, two years ago, had to have my right knee replaced uh, from a skiing injury 20 years ago. And I was given no information at all. I was given um, needles because I had to uh, inject myself with blood thinners, which is becoming protocol after major surgery. Um, I was given the needles. I was given no container. I was given no information that they couldn't go in the trash. If I didn't work for waste management, I would have had no idea that these could not be just thrown away. Um, but because I work for waste management, I got one of these little handy dandy things <laughs> and did the right thing with it. Um, but it's not information that's known. Um, we talked a lot about the scope of the problem. Um, you know, some estimates are as high as um, needle stick injuries. And of course, I work for waste management. We're uh, the largest hauler in the U.S. Uh, we have Consolidated Republic, who's here. They're the second largest. So, you know, you're going to be hearing a lot about sort of the back end service, what happens when these things are improperly disposed of. But needle stick injuries, um, it ranges anywhere from 267,000 to 836,000 injuries a year that's happening. Um, and we've heard a lot about um, the horrible uh, diseases that um, can come from uh, getting stuck by a needle. Uh, the reality is that most of these sharps end up in the municipal waste stream. Um, so in the end, they're going to consolidated, they're going to us, they're going to people who manage MRFs, which are recycling centers, material recovery facilities. Um, this is really a worker safety issue. Um, but even before it gets to the MRF, um, I was doing a little research in, in preparation for this and heard a story from one of our drivers up in the Pacific Northwest. Um, he was sitting in the cab of the truck. It was an automated um, cart pickup system. So the, the arm came out, picked up the cart, was flipping it over. A needle came out of the cart. His arm was sitting in the window. The needle flew over and stuck him in the arm. Um, so even when you're doing all the right things, if the needles are in the trash, um, they can they can get you. Um, so the the costs associated with this um, estimates nationally in the U.S. are that um, it's 1.75 to 3.75 billion dollars a year are being spent on uh, treating needle stick injuries. Um, and as the biggest waste hauler, we are doing a lot to try and prevent this. But you know, we can't prevent our drivers from <laughs> randomly getting stuck. Um, so needle stick injuries are one of the top three injuries that are reported at MRFs, at, at uh, recycling centers. And when, uh, as you heard in that video, when a sharp is found on the, on the recycling line, everything has to stop. Um, and our protocol is that literally the whole uh, line is then sorted. Anything that hasn't made it to the line is then hand sorted. And in an automated facility where a lot is getting pulled out by magnets and blowers, it's an enormous loss of productivity to the company. Um, so we do a lot to really try and, and protect our workers. We've made a huge investment. The, this is a glove, obviously. That's a sleeve um, that goes on a worker. And so all of our, all of our line guys and gals um, have these. They cost 60 bucks for a set. The gloves last a week. 
Um, the sleeves last about two weeks, usually. Um, so, and this is state of the art. Uh, we've been working with um, Hex Armor, who makes this, this glove and sleeve uh, for about eight years. We've gone through 20 generations of materials um, to try and find the right things to be protecting our workers on the line. Um, it's a huge organizational investment um, that anybody who's running um, a MARF is really um, having, to, having to invest in. Um, so one of the other things that we do, you know, there's been a lot of talk about um, how, uh, you know, who's going to pay for this, how's it going to happen. Um, it's one of the things that we try and do with our cities is get creative on solutions. Um, so we've got these little mailbag containers. They do have the plastic sleeve inside of them. Um, and as part of the contracts now that we are developing with cities, we're including this. Um, and it is, it's a home delivery program. So you call our customer service line. We will come and deliver it to your house. Um, and then once the container is filled, you send it back. Um, in every city that we're doing it, the first one is free. Um, usually the second one is free, uh, definitely for senior citizens. Then it costs five bucks. Our cost is $35. Um, so we are making a huge investment um, in this. We are very much in favor <laughs> of other kind of solutions because um, this is really expensive. Um, for us, but you know, we tried to do programs through pharmacies and cities and residents. You know, they'd go to the pharmacy, they'd say, "Here's my container," and the pharmacy would say, "I can't take that," or they'd say, "I, I need, I need your healthcare information and figure out what your copay is." And you know, it was a pain, and nobody was doing it, and um, it was prohibitive. So we are doing. Uh, this is the biggest thing we're doing. We do uh, kiosks, um, big kiosks like this. Um, <coughs> We do collection events. We're, we're you know, trying to get creative with the cities that we serve uh, to figure out solutions. Um, but you know, extended producer responsibility, we are all in favor of. And um, you know, we've been talking a lot about laws. As we continue to move towards zero waste, um, which is one of the main things that a lot of our cities are, are talking about. You know, they want, we, we at Waste Management believe that sticking with waste is actually going out of business strategy. Uh, so we are making enormous investments in recycling and in medical waste and in all kinds of other um, programs. Uh, waste management in 2010 bought Curbside Inc., um, which uh, is a household hazardous waste uh, receiving company. Um, and so, you know, we'll come to your house and pick up all the household hazardous waste including uh, sharps that you have, and, and take them away. And uh, so we're doing that with a lot of our cities. But you know, as things continue to move towards eliminating waste and eliminating more and more things out of the waste in stream, as um, communities continue to struggle with obesity and diabetes and other um, blood-borne illnesses, this is going to become um, a continuing issue. And so we, we are very much in favor of moving forward.